and, and hello, welcome everyone to this video of uh, DW Sim. Okay, so before I get started, I want to just uh, get you through some administrative matters. Uh, so this is the DW Sim repository I'm going to have. I'm going to leave the uh, the video link in the description below. Uh, go check it out in your own time and. Of course, you will see this YouTube demo one DW sim, which was the DW sim file I had in the last video. So you can go check it out in your own time. Uh, but for this, uh, just just so you know, uh, DW uh, when I say YouTube demo one, it will not always correspond to video one of DW sim. They may differ here and there. So I'll let you know uh, which video or which save file I'm referring to. Okay. So without further ado, let's start. Okay, this is about 55 seconds in, so I'll just leave it as one minute in for video sectioning. Okay, so uh, what are we going to do? Uh, we're going to look at uh, some of my documents and go into my YouTube and let's go to DW Sim. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the backup which I'm not going to use. Okay, I'm going to open the YouTube demo 1 and then I'm going to save as YouTube demo 2 for at least this video so to save as you just uh, wait for DW sim to load up and then you go file and you put a uh, save as save as uh, play with the DW sim go to basics and I'll just put YouTube demo 2 uh, DW sim compressed XML that's the simulation file okay so just save it up and there you go okay today I want to talk about uh, pipes or rather more accurately pipe segments okay so uh, there will be under pressure changes so we did streams last video material stream then there are like pressure changes here like compressor expander pump okay compressor is for gases pump is for liquids uh, pipe segment orifice plate and valves these are the available things pipe network here is for DWC pro you have to pay for it I don't know how much so don't ask me and you can ask uh, the people marketing this stuff okay so um, let's go let's explore what's inside pipe segments so under pipe segment if you just drag the pipe segment segment like so you will see this pipe 01 uh, showing up and then uh, you will be able to see on the pipe segment the drop down menu you will have general info with, for which you can uh, edit the name here so I'll say uh, uh, I guess uh, pump I'll just call this pump outlet uh, pipe okay and then this uh, the name should change when you press uh, when you uh, hit enter inlet stream I'll just use mstr02 or material stream 02 Outlet stream will be, well, I can make a new stream. So I'll just create a new part, uh, a new stream, and it will automatically connect. And of course, if you wanted, you can, you can actually uh, rotate your pipe. So you can rotate uh, uh, minus ninety degrees, or you know, uh, plus ninety degrees if you wanted to angle the pipe upwards. So plus ninety is. Uh, so called anti clockwise, All right? So plus 180, uh, minus 180. I'm just showing you some things here. So 270 is like so, okay? Minus 270. All right, so, so this is how minus 270 will look. So you can go and play with the, the orientations if you want, okay? So I'm just going to use this to show you some features. So just pretend for a while this is a a, a pipe that's like you know horizontal uh, or well vertical if you want or horizontal if you want because uh, it's really up to you to to define. Okay. So <clears throat> under under pipe you will have two 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 material streams, one inlet and one outlet, and then I can rotate again plus ninety or minus 90 minus 90 or uh, whatever invert I can also use the invert vertically or horizontally so I'll do invert vertically to invert it like literally vertically uh, yep 
So, uh, yeah, so this is what happens. So, yeah, it, we, we can uh, invert this vertically, and then uh, this will be the, the material stream. Okay, of course, uh, you can actually solve the flow sheet, but then you will have an error. Okay. It says a pump outlet pipe has no energy stream uh, associated with the pipe. So this thing actually needs another energy stream. Okay. So what is this energy stream for? Well, <coughs> excuse me. Let me... I want to invert this. Ah. Come on, come on. Let me save it first. Yeah, okay, there you go. Okay, I think I inverted it too many times. Okay, how about this? I redo the pipe. It's really too messy now. Let me delete, delete. Did it? Yeah. All right. Okay. Let me uh rotate. Uh, I will rotate minus ninety to face it upwards, and inlet stream will be MSTR O two. Outlet stream will be something I make. Okay. And if I want to rotate 180, that will make it okay. Right, this is much neater. Then I'll just do like what pipe, pipe out, <clears throat> terminal outlet pipe. Okay, and this is how it should look. Okay, so okay, so what we we were saying that yeah, I need I needed an energy stream. Why do we need an energy stream? Well, it depends on what kind of medium, what kind of uh, place your pipe is flowing through. So if your pipe is constantly, is carrying a hot fluid and is constantly losing heat to the environment, you will need to specify how much heat it loses. Okay, so this will come, this part come, uh, will be quite interesting if you want to simulate a, a full pipe segment or a, a long pipe segment. So, um, how, uh, of course, pipes will have a certain pressure drop and a certain heat loss associated with them. That's why you have energy and material streams. So if you want to set how much uh, how much uh, uh, pressure drop there is and how much temperature drop, okay, you go to calculation parameters. There are three tabs here, at least in the 2022 version. One is a called one is called general, and it, and it sells it will tell you what calculation mode it uses to specify the, the, the pressure or the temperature drop. So there are three calculations mode, three calculation modes. One is to specify the length and hydraulic profile. Second is to specify the outlet pressure. Third is to specify the outlet temperature. Of course there are lots of uh, lots of uh, things over here. <coughs> yeah. Outlet temperature, outlet pressure. There's a pressure drop correlation which you can look at. Uh, if you you can look for more information here. All right, you uh, and oh, they, they will actually link you to some useful useful things. Excuse me, I was about to sneeze and uh, yeah, pardon me for that. <laughs> so I have to kind of fast forward the recording. Okay, so this is the Bax and Brill correlation. You can go and read more about it. There's lots of correlations you can use. Okay, so I'm going to close this. Here are the temperature and pressure tolerances, uh, I guess for convergence. Meaning to say when you solve uh, when you solve for the pressure drop and temperature drop, I think the 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 uh, what do you call that? The uh, the calculations are iterative in nature. So that means they will uh, loop through the calculation algorithms several times and then uh, when when the results are within 0 0.01 Kelvin or 100 Pascals of each other, then you'll stop. 
Okay, you will also be able to select the properties package, which by default is our cool props package. So I'm not going to do anything there. There's an emulsion effect thing here, which I'm not going to uh, do because we are only talking about uh, Ferminol, which is a mixture of uh, biphenyl and diphenyl oxide. So those uh, will not form emulsions, I think, because uh, they're pretty uh, organic compounds, not too polar in nature. Okay, so uh, what we have here are the hydraulic profiles. There'll be segments here. You can have a segment one. Uh, so what is all this segment and all, everything, you know? Okay, so if you... Uh, if you if you take a look at this segment, uh, this is the like segment one, I guess. Okay, and you can add sections as well to the pipe, or you can delete them using the minus. But let let's let's go with the the chill stuff first. So pipes can be segmented into many different parts. So you know pipes they they can be horizontal, okay, they can be vertical, they can uh. <coughs> They can uh, they have bends in them or whatever. So uh, you can have multiple pipe segments within this uh, this uh, pipe segment thing here. So that that can show you that that hydraulic profile. Okay, that can show you that hydraulic profile. Okay, there are lots of things you can play with here. One is uh, whether it's a straight tube. Okay, this pipe segment can be a straight tube, uh, elbow ninety degrees, elbow forty five degrees. Okay, the angle valve, angle valve, butterfly valve, ball valve, gate valve, globe valve, lift track valve. Well, there's a lot of things uh, uh, done here. Puppet disc valve, check valve, T's. Okay, a quick reduction. Okay, means that the pipe diameter changes. A border inlet, normal inlet. Uh, I'm not sure what a border inlet is. Quick expansion. Okay, means the pipe diameter changes instead of. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. <sighs> I think I need some water. Hold on. Uh, I'll, I will be back. I'll fast forward. Okay. So anyway, let's let's continue taking a look at the types. Quick expansion, a ninety degree bend. What's the difference between a ninety degree bend and a ninety degree elbow? I have no idea here. Okay, but uh, maybe let's see what ninety degree elbow will do. Okay, it will just ask you to specify the inlet diameter. Okay, 180 degree elbow, nothing says, nothing's there. Okay, uh, I, I don't know. Okay, normal reduction 2 to 1. Uh, there's a border exit, normal exit, and a fixed delta P. Okay, fixed delta P, I think, I think it means that you have a fixed pressure drop, but... <coughs> Well, um, for fixed pressure drop, it's sort of better to use a valve. It's, it makes more sense to me, at least. But, yeah, uh, the option is there. I don't know how to use it now, but straight tube, I think, should be quite straightforward, if you know what I mean. Okay, pardon the joke, pardon the joke. Okay, okay so we have uh, increments here, <coughs> which I suppose will uh, tell you how many nodes there are in your calculation. You should be able to see the, the, the view over here, what your profile is like. Okay. <coughs> yeah. So So what are you able to define with a straight tube? Okay. You can define a length, maybe the tube is one meter long. Elevation, maybe one meter long or so, that means it's literally straight up. Okay, external diameter. Okay, let's let's give it 0 0.1. Internal diameter 0 0.05. So it's a thick pipe. <coughs> okay, so that is uh that is what your pipe will look like. Okay, then maybe save. And you should be able to look at the view once the whole thing calculates. You can do a soft flow sheet. Hopefully it uh it will work. Okay, it says error, hydraulic profile of pipe is not set. Okay, so uh, who? Maybe I just put one. Let me try again. Hydraulic profile of pipe is not set. Okay. 
Let me check this out. Anyway, before I start off debug everything, let me go through the other things first. Okay, you will have a, a selection of materials you have here like raw steel, carbon steel, cast iron, stainless steel, PVC, all of this. What's the point of that? Okay, there, are, there are two things on, uh, that you kind of have. One is the rugosity, which is I guess surface roughness. You can actually uh, check it out in Paris Chemical Engineering Handbook. And of course the thermal conductivity of the thing and that will actually help you to do heat transfer calculations. So I'll just say you use a PVC pipe. Okay, and uh, thermal conductivity here, of course, is temperature dependent. It's quite interesting. You, you see that? And then, of course, last thing is thermal profile. Okay, what's thermal profile? Uh, thermal profile is just here. Okay, you will, you will have a overall heat transfer coefficient, which you can just define. Maybe the overall heat transfer coefficient uh, I assume you uh, you know what heat transfer coefficient is and all that, so I'll just leave it as it is. Maybe I just give you twenty watts per meter per Kelvin. <coughs> and external temperature, maybe let's put at fifteen degrees C. And then, uh, yeah, that will that will specify some heat loss to the environment. This thing's twenty five degrees C. Maybe outside is fifteen is really cold for whatever reason. So let me try and solve the flow sheet. And then it says, uh, oh, hydraulic profile of pipe is still not set. Okay, so anyway, those are the features you can actually uh, go and take a look at. What's this material we went through? What are the some of the thermal profile we went through? Uh, of course, you can define some uh, ways of heat loss. You can define the overall heat transfer coefficient. You can, of course, define the heat exchange. That's the very manual way of doing it. Or you can estimate overall heat transfer coefficient. And what that does, in addition to all your piping things over here, all right, what that does is this. You can uh, include the pipe walls, uh, internal heat transfer coefficient. You can even uh, simulate some insulation on that. So there is that, that nice, uh, <coughs> there's that nice uh, thing you can try. There's a lot of customizability there. Okay, and of course the outside, for the outside of the pipe, you can say it is air, water, gravel, stones, dry soil, and moist soil. It's a very interesting uh, thing selection uh, selection you have there. So you, you, you can go and check this out in your own time, but we can go for the most simple of them. Okay, so uh, this, one, this one is really, if you have a very detailed, uh, I guess, detailed uh, uh, model, or you, know what re you really know what your pipe is made of, and then you can estimate the heat transfer. So it'll be interesting to see if you have a real pipe, what, what is that heat transfer like? Okay, so now on to debugging this thing. Oh, before I continue, just want to say that, yeah, it's kind of weird for this uh, external diameter to be 1 mm in diameter. So let me give maybe 10 mm or 50 mm. Internal diameter, let's put at 20 mm. Okay, so I think there should be a tick mark. Apply changes. Oh, right. Okay, I should do apply changes, and that's why. Let me solve. And wow, see? Now everything is good. Uh, and you see the pressure actually drops pretty drastically. Okay. Why? Uh, reason is that uh, this uh, pipe is actually literally going upwards. As you can see, uh, this is a vertical pipe. If I change the... Uh, if I change the elevation, maybe uh, 0 0.2 meter, for example. Uh, okay, so whenever it says status is modified, make sure to apply the changes with this check mark. If not, you'll get the error that I had just now. And you can see that the, the pressure thing actually changes a lot. Okay, so now if you want this uh, terminal pump to give it a bit more kick, so maybe let's put a uh, 1000 so that this thing can actually pump the thing upwards, solve the flow sheet. If not, uh, uh, 10, 1, E, 5 would also be okay. 100,000, oh, I'll say. So this is a one atmosphere level pump. Okay, so uh, you can see that uh, we have uh, 2 kilopascal. Okay, uh, this thing is actually um, going to uh, about 2 atmospheres, all right, of uh, pressure. 
The flow rate is of course 800 kg per hour. Nothing change, nothing changes. The, the pressure will drop as the as you lose some uh, lose some uh, pressure over the pipe and of course as you increase the elevation the more pressure it will drop you know so uh, that's how we do things and you see the, the pressure will, will drop drastically if we, we change the elevation to zero of course we the, the, the pressure drop will be a lot less can you see it's only about a few, few thousand pascals but most of the thing is to really uh the the important thing is to really get this uh get this uh, fluid moving through the pipe let's just put it as a vertical all right <clears throat> and okay yeah. okay as of now i don't know what this increments thing is okay um i'm learning and i make videos as i learn that is always a style of this channel so if that if that really becomes important maybe i'll make an update video but as of now i don't really know you can see the over here very very interestingly the horizontal distance versus uh or length versus uh elevation is like so or horizontal distance versus elevation is also like so so it is pretty interesting okay of course you can add segments to the pipe if your pipe is a bit more complicated so i can always add another segment like this Okay, instead of a straight tube, I can say it is a uh, maybe an elbow, 90 degree elbow. <coughs> so what does 90 degree elbow do? It will just, uh, it will just, uh, it will just uh, cause the pipe to lose pressure. So, alright, I want to change the raw steel to PVC, sorry. Kind of uh, forgot about that. Okay, oh, I have an unhandled error exception. Now, probably because I left the internal diameter as empty, I will just leave it as 20. Let me, yeah, so errors, okay. So, yeah, that will be a next segment of the pipe. Then maybe I can actually put one more straight tube, not raw steel. I will put it as a PVC again. Uh, maybe I have one meter length zero elevation because this maybe the elbow is to flip it from vertical to horizontal external diameter 50 internal diameter 20 okay 20 then just click okay okay and then solve and then if you take a look at the profile it is like that so it will go up all the way first and then it will go straight so you can add a lot of segments if you want over here, uh, straight tube, elbow 90 degree, and another straight tube. So you don't have to keep adding pipe items, pipe items. As long as the thermal profile is more or less the same, uh, you will be able to uh, so-called, uh, yeah, you'll be able to so-called estimate some uh, heat loss. If your pipe's longer, of course, you lose more heat because there's more surface area. Um, yeah, but that's, that's uh, what there is two pipes you can do pressure drops uh, quite nicely there you can of course okay anyway i, I want to play this okay so uh, external temperature will of course leave it as 15 we can always change it in the future okay i'll include pipe walls include internal heat transfer coefficient i'll just include everything yeah <clears throat> fiberglass or maybe uh, polyurethane foam oh is it uh, poly, huh. polyurethane foam asphalt, uh, concrete asphalt, foam PVC, fiberglass? Leave it as a foam. Maybe the thickness I'll give is about, give or take, uh, it's a few cm, uh, maybe 2 cm, yeah, 30, 25, 25 mm. Include external heat transfer coefficient, so this, this is very interesting. Uh, velocity of air. Okay, so. Uh, ex include external heat transfer coefficient so air can be blowing over the pipe you can estimate its velocity maybe 0 0.5 meters per second constant and uh, I wonder if there's an apply but I'll just click enter and I'll try to solve the flow sheet okay so uh, interestingly enough the, the, the thing actually heats up a little bit why? because you are losing uh, you can see the temperature before and after 
yeah, it's a lot. <clears throat> it's actually about the same because the terminal pump actually adds some uh, heat to this fluid. It's not 100% efficient. You can actually change the efficiency of the terminal pump here. Efficiency in percent. And uh, yeah, this, uh, what do you call that? This uh, flow will be solved as such. Of course, when you add insulation, you can see that it loses a lot less heat. So if I change to the overall heat transfer coefficient model, 20 watts per meter square per Kelvin, and I and use that, and you can see it loses a lot of heat, which may or may not be desirable. But if I do the estimate heat transfer coefficient, and then I drop, I put insulation on this thing, and it loses a lot less heat. Okay, that's, that's, uh, that's just some nice features to explore. Okay, so thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Of course, I will save this as YouTube demo too. You can check it out on the GitHub, on, on my GitHub. Hey, see you.